Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's video, hopefully we can start finishing out the porch, uh, finishing out the soffits, and I don't know if it'll be in this video or not, but we're still waiting on digging the trench for the main electric running to the house. So stay tuned. Okay, so first thing we got going on is we finally got these brackets. These things are ginormous. So these are going to hold up those LVL sitting over there. They're gonna sit on the top plate underneath of the trusses that are installed right now, get nailed down and uh, through the nails right there in the front, uh, get pushed into the top plate. Then of course you've got nail holes on the side when you set your LVLs down in there. So as that sits on the wall, uh, coming down the ICF, the LVLs will sit three abreast in that channel, and then those will run out and will then sit on top of these poles right here that we have to cut down, and then that basically makes a box. So you're going over, down, and really that's all because that's sitting on its own foundation, and the deck really has nothing to do with it, but essentially you are still building a box. Then we just got our trusses delivered. Now, once again, this truck driver couldn't back in but luckily we only have like 14 tresses and they weigh like absolutely nothing as opposed to those like almost 400 pound uh, garage attic trusses with two by 10 bottom plates. Those were heavy. Uh, but these ones, these are the back deck. So they're only like 12 foot long or so at the base with two foot overhangs, so a little over 14 foot that those are gonna be for the back uh, porch. Uh, basically just going over the rear sliding glass uh, door, so that way you're kind of protected from weather. And then the front is the exact same thing. Also scissor trusses, um, also uh, a 812 pitch upper, so they match the house. Uh, 412 inner just makes the front porch seem a little bit bigger when you have a scissor truss as opposed to a, uh, a flat truss it'll make the front seem a little bit cooler and then this time I did it right now it's buried so you can't see it but that very first truss in there that's an end truss so no different than the garage end and the house end and the two end trusses that we used on the inside the difference is is that is a structural end truss so end trusses if they're not structural they have to sit on a load bearing surface um, so that's why the garage end truss and the outside house end truss they're sitting on the walls but the internal end trusses on the inside of the house, those are not structural, but they also don't need to be carrying any weight of the roof really, because all those are doing is holding up drywall. So if you look in the intro video, you see me and my dad hammering a scissor truss to an end truss. That's because it's the scissor truss that's actual structural that's holding the roof up. That's why we nailed them together. Those internal end trusses, again, are only holding up drywall and they're only holding up the ceiling going this way. So there really is no point to them to be structural. Um, granted, hindsight 2020, looking back at it, I probably could have deleted two scissor trusses and didn't nail them together if I just would have went with two internal end trusses that were structural. So I probably could have saved I think those scissor trusses were like 180 a piece, but the end trusses would have gotten more expensive. So I don't know, I could have saved maybe 200 bucks if I just would have went with uh, internal uh, structural end trusses. Now, the other thing I did correctly that you probably can't see too easily, this bottom truss here, see how that two by four sticks out really far right there? Well, that's because that and the one over here is a drop end truss. So now instead of doing our ladder overhangs, instead of just bringing in a two by four directly into it and nailing it like toe nailing it, you can actually put a two by four sitting on top of that, nail it down this way, but the two by four can extend in and nail into the side plate like right here uh, onto the second truss. So now you've got a two by that's still sitting like this for the ladder, but it's sitting on the drop truss, going inside, nailed into the back of a secondary truss here, and then it's doing its two foot overhang. So it's a lot more structurally sound. However, on these little ones here, you can see you've only got about four feet till you get to the peak, but then you've got another
another four feet or so running down here that you're still gonna have to take a uh, two by and toe nail it in there and hopefully that's structurally sound enough to hold up an overhang. Um, obviously on the uh, porch in the front of the house, that same drop truss on that bottom is only four feet, so you really only have to worry about the very end sagging, but you've got a heck of a lot more uh, nailing surface up in here to be running those ladders up through there that are gonna be a lot more structurally sound, and that's the way I should have done it to begin with um, for the, uh, the front and the back for all of the ladder overhangs. Uh, they should have been uh, non-structural end trusses, but they should have been drop trusses. So live and learn, but that's why, again, I put that like T11 kind of underside on there because that's structurally now keeping that up so it doesn't want to dip down. Uh, that T11 is never going to buckle and then the ladder isn't going to then drop down. So not worried about it. It's just that would have been a little bit easier and a little bit better from the get go. So uh, first thing that we can do here is mount these two brackets. Uh, pretty simple. Just need to nail them. Uh, up top here and through the side. I can properly cut those. Uh, probably gonna have to pull them back down or get a lift or something, because obviously those are 18 feet long. That's a little high in the air to be up there cutting a six by six post in half uh, to drop it down to the appropriate length. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. So uh, stick around, we'll get set up here and we'll get going. That other one went smoothly, but this one, of course, you're always gonna run into a problem. Uh, this one needs to slide over to where, like in between these two notches are running up, so that'll be even with the side of the porch. Unfortunately, we've got a truss in the way. So that bracket's only about two inches deep. So what we're gonna have to do is take the oscillating tool and basically notch in like 3 16 of an inch or uh, three eighths, whatever thick that plate is, uh, that plate thickness is, uh, notch in, basically go in two inches and then kick that out. And then the bracket can slide under that truss. So now the truss has something to sit on again, even though it's still sitting on the rest of the uh, upper plate there. But uh, we've got to notch it out and slide it in there because there's no other way to get it in. Both brackets are set, uh, that worked perfect. Just notched that out a little bit, slid the bracket in there, and when I hammered the bracket in underneath of the truss, the truss is now sitting back on the bracket. So we're good there. So we've got them both set. Now it's time to get the diamond piers set. So we gotta do that again. Um, last night, I already marked out this pole where it needs to go onto the ground. Got it plumb uh, front ways and sideways. So now I just need to move it out of the way and start digging that diamond pier foundation. Uh, I don't have the jackhammer, so I'll only put the poles into the ground just a little bit because they're so big. It's gonna be a lot of effort to put them in, but uh, we'll set that up, get that going, and then we gotta figure out how eventually we're gonna cut this pole here. Well, that officially sucks. Um, those things are not lightweight. I tore the crap out of my arm trying to pick that up, and now I've got like a permanent indentation and puffiness on the inner part of my forearm from trying to pick that thing up. But 
as you can see, as I talked about before, the roof now has its own support system. That is only supporting the roof and the roof only. And the one over here is supporting the deck and the deck only. But I still went ahead and sunk those like four and a half inch GRKs in here and here and on the inside up in here to this piece of blocking. So now, even though they're separated, they're still kind of connected. Obviously, these four GRKs aren't holding the weight of the roof up, but this uh, post now can't really separate from the deck. It's still driving its own force straight down to its own foundation pier. Uh, it's perfectly plumb, both fr uh, front and back and side to side. And now we just got to figure out how we're going to get up there and measure on over to uh, what nine and a half or nine and a quarter inches will be for the thickness of those LVLs. Uh, cut that six by six, and then we have to sit the LVLs on top of the six by six with a, uh, another bracket, um, just like these brackets that you see here. I guess technically I could just measure. It's not probably the most accurate way uh, in case the deck is like pitching at all but I guess technically I could measure up from the top of the deck up to the top of the bracket or even the bottom of the bracket and then measure up from the deck out here, go up the pole and measure to the same bottom to get the same number and then just go ahead and add on nine and a quarter inches and that would be my cut. So that's technically probably what I'll do because with the roof in the way, there's nothing that I can do right now and I don't know if I'm going to cut the roof because if I cut the roof back now I'm going to be leaking uh, basically onto the top plate which could run down into the house because I've just cut that overhang back. Same thing goes when I have to cut all the way down there. So all of that roofing right there from that plate there to that plate over there all of that roofing needs cut back uh, flush with the house so it goes straight up and down even with the house. So that's a lot of two by fours that need cut. That's a lot of uh, uh, ice and water shield that needs cut. That's a lot of uh, five eighths plywood that needs cut. And once all that's hacked off and it then drops in over and then comes back out, then we can run the LVLs out this way and run them out this way. And then we can set our first truss, but I can't do anything until I cut that back. And with four days of major rain coming up, I don't see that being uh, likely to happen. Um, we'll do that when we've got about a, a week of sunlight coming up, a day that I can get up there and cut all that. We're probably gonna need a lift back out here because I'm gonna be all the way up and over trying to cut on a line to make that even. And then we'll even need the reciprocating saw to go down and cut through those trusses. But that'll be a day when I need help with a, a lift and stuff like that. So we'll do that later, but at least we'll try to get this other one set up today. Uh, try to get up there and figure out where we do need to cut to measure. And then that's one more thing done with the porch. Hey everybody, welcome back for another day. Uh, so, unfortunately we can't do the porch right now. Um, like I said, there was rain in the forecast and the front yard is just an absolute swamp. Um, the water will dry in a few days, but unfortunately you step on it, sticks to your boots, you just make more of a mess and it's just a pain in the butt. So, we'll get the stringers and the extra two diamond piers out later and finish the stairs so we can actually get up onto the porch. But for right now, we transitioned back into the house and what we did so far is we got all the diagonal bracing that they want here. And if you remember, these diagonal braces going from the bottom all the way up to the top are supposed to be every 20 feet. We've got that diagonal brace and that diagonal brace right there. Those are every 10 feet and we're less than 20 feet within here to here. So we only needed two anyway. Uh, and then we got all of our horizontal bracing on here. Uh, and that's butted up now against the gable end wall and the gable end wall. So this is a lot more secure going this way. The problem is that we just noticed is that the gable end on the inside is not straight. It's not plumb. So we got the bottom all straight front and back. And when we set those trusses, there were marks up there to set them on the ICF wall front and back. The problem is, is the top ended up bowing in almost three inches this way. So as we're moving the bottom, the top's kind of locked in because of the sheathing. And then it's also kind of pinched in the middle where the scissor truss is attached. So we put a whole bunch of extra bracing like this two by here running across 
that's connected across the V right there. So as we pushed out the bottom and we're like kind of pushing out the top, the two bys right here up and down kind of bowed a little. So we're trying to like suck those back in. We've got all these braces like here, there, and there, keeping this bottom from moving now. But unfortunately, a lot of time has been spent uh, trying to get that wall plumb. Uh, the kitchen wall, I'm not so worried about it because that doesn't have a wall going from the gable end all the way down to the floor. That just makes needs to be like an L shape. And if it's a little bit one way or another, you may not notice it. But because this wall here is literally going from the peak of that scissor all the way down to the floor, if the wall that we build right here is perfectly straight and the gable end is like this, then it's going to look horrible. So it's pretty much straight now, not 100%, but I don't think you're going to notice it, especially when right about here is going to be the fireplace. So stone will be going all the way up there. And as I, if the gable end is like this, well, if I build out a stone wall face, like a, a, a chase of like two by fours, and then uh, brick or stone that in, then I can make that wall straight. So really we only have to worry about kind of in here over and maybe right about, I would say about here over that that wall actually has to be plumb from the floor to the ceiling. So I think we did a good enough job that you won't be able to notice anything, but now we can get started on the master bedroom wall. So we're gonna get set up and get going with that now. Hey everybody, welcome back for another day on the build. So, as you just saw through the time lapse, my dad and I started building out the master bedroom wall. And I know many people are gonna ask, what the heck are you doing building a wall like that? Well, the trusses basically aren't 100% level. Um, we've had some trouble with uh, the, the front of the, and the back of the ICF house not being level. And uh, that gable and truss there is a little wavy. So we decided just to build it out one stud at a time. Now, how about this layout? So as you can see, I got a little bit more done than when my dad uh, was over and we were doing just the master bedroom wall. Uh, we have got the first railing up going down over top of the stairs to make that a little bit safer. And I'm not sure what Aaron wants to do yet. Um, I'm kind of for another two by six wall going all the way down there. So it's really stiff and secure. And uh, she wants to do from here on out uh, more of like an iron railing uh, type setup. So we're gonna have to see what we wanna do. The reason why I'm for the two by six wall is because you, this is a lot of wasted space in here. Like there's really nothing that's gonna go in here. 
Um, so if you put a wall, you could put something along this wall or along this railing here and do something with it. But if it's an iron railing, you're not going to really want to put something up there because then things will just fall back behind it. And uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll see what you guys think in the comments. Should this wall be an iron railing looking down or should that be a dry walled and solid wall kind of like this one's going to be? So again, we use two by six wall here to make that really stiff. And this little stubby wall here, well, what is this one? This is kind of the, the throne room, if you will. This little wall here uh, is only going to be blocking the toilet. So as you're sitting here, right here like this, you're down in the toilet. And then this two by four wall here that's gonna go all the way across, that's the master bedroom closet. So roughly 15 feet this way and almost 10 feet this way. So heck of a master bedroom closet. But the reason why we did this one out of two by six and why we put a shorty wall here again is the door to come into the bathroom is gonna be over here. And in fact, the doors are gonna be equal with this window. So you've got a window here, then you'll have a door for the closet. And then over here where this two by four wall is, uh, you've got the door for the um, uh, going into the bathroom. So they're all even. So I guess if you had all the windows or the doors open, you could have light coming through uh, the closet, through the bathroom, into the master bedroom. And then of course over here on the master bedroom, you've got this massive six foot by 13 foot wide window. So again, that little stubby wall is just so when you open up the door right here in the middle, you're not having a direct line of sight to the toilet. So someone can like poke their head around and be like, occupied. And the other reason why this wall is two by six is because this is where the shower is going. So we still have to build out, well, the, the two by four wall here is that we still have to build out, but the shower is basically going right here and the mechanicals are gonna be on this wall. So to have a two by six wall where we only sacrificed one, two, three, four, two by sixes instead of two by fours, gives you a little bit more room in here for the mechanicals to come up for the shower uh, because we are gonna probably do a shower head right here. And then right here in the middle, we're probably gonna do a rain shower. So it's just a little bit more piping and everything to go up and down through there. So just made that stubby out of two by six. So the bathroom's gonna be almost the same as the closet. It's a little bit over 10 feet wide, but also almost 15 feet this way. And then the master bedroom is also 15 feet this way, but it's 16 feet long. So decent size for all of that. Then as we walk through this massive uh, 36 inch door. It's a uh, rough opening right now at 38. It is eight foot tall and now you're leaving the master bedroom and now you're in the office space. Now I just did this that you guys didn't see on camera because I did it by myself but this office space was a pain in the butt. The reason why that is is because none of these fell on layout with any studs so of course I had to put blocking in there and then because these are all scissor trusses going up there all of these studs needed angle cut at a 412 pitch and the blocking needed to be put up there and go even up and down with the stud or with a truss here, truss here. So those blockings go up like that, but then you needed a 412 pitch for all of these. So this was kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. And then because these walls are two by fours, we went ahead and put blocking in just because it's a heck of a lot stiffer. Not to mention this wall here is uh, just under 14 feet tall as it goes up to the peak. So as you're sitting here in the office, you've got anywhere from almost 10 foot four all the way up to almost 14 feet back here of ceiling above your head. Uh, we could probably do a drop ceiling in there, but it, at this point it is what it is. Um, then you walk out of the office space, there will be no door here, and you have got a four foot opening by eight foot tall. Again, no door, but if you look from far away, that door is completely centered that if that door there right now is 38 inches rough framed, we just went out this way and we went out this way on this wall to make this even. So as you look down through there, it's perfectly straight. 
and I left at least six inches over here for some drywall to go up there, and that should be nice and pretty as it looks through there. But that office space should give us plenty of room for a nice desk to sit right up against this wall here. So as you're sitting here on a computer looking out, you can kind of put the computer over in this corner or over here or whatever, but you got a nice view to go ahead and look out into the backyard as you're typing and doing whatever. So that's really it. That's that whole side of the house. We are done. Um, the only thing else that we have to do is right in here where this uh, two by is laying, wherever center is, that's gonna be the center of the fireplace. So it's not 100% even with the peak, because as you see, the peak's over there, but the fireplace and the stone is basically gonna go right in here somewhere. But our mantle is eight foot wide, so that's an eight foot board right there. And then probably up along here, we're gonna have some bookshelves, and even over here, we've got some bookshelves, so we'll place that exactly centered. And then you've got this nice little nook in here for the fireplace and all that stuff. And then I just started over here. Uh, I've mentioned this before in a video, but this wall that I am doing right now, this is the laundry room. So when you're really, really, really dirty and you come in, I know you're supposed to go into a mud room, but you're gonna go into the laundry room here. So when you're really muddy, you can put your boots down somewhere over in here, and then you'll have washer, dryer, utility tub, or washer, dryer, utility tub over here, whatever. So if again, if you're really dirty, not only do you have some place to take off dirty, muddy boots, but you can wash up. And then as you walk through a, another 36 inch door, so that's a 36 inch door here. You walk through another 36 inch door right here. Uh, so the laundry room will be completely closed off and quiet. And now you're in the mud room slash coat room slash shoe room. So this wall right here that ends on the ground, this is where you're gonna have like bench seating. So you can come here, sit down, your shoes can go under like a little cabinet here. You can hang your coat up right here. And once again, as you leave the mud room slash coat room, we've got another four foot wide opening and that will also be eight foot tall. And that is also just like that door over there. It's centered out exactly that you've got enough room over here and enough room over here that that window is directly centered in between this four foot opening. So as you're all the way back in here, all of that light can shine right through the mud room and go into the kitchen area. But then again, of course, back here, you've also got a massive six foot by 13 foot uh, window to feed all of the light into the dining room and into the kitchen area. Now, the other two walls that I need to put on the ground over in here is in this corner over in here is going to be a walk-in pantry. So as you can see, you can make the pantry as wide as you want, and we can go this way as wide as we want, but at least as a walk-in. I think Aaron wants to do it at a diagonal. So from like right here over somewhere in this, we may do a diagonal still enough for a walk-in but that doesn't make the house so symmetrical you get a little bit of a, of a break up in there and then the last wall that i have to build is i think we've talked about this before is what the heck are we going to do right here where this wall ends on the mudroom and goes over to kind of the front door i know a lot of people said you've got to have a bathroom up here so as you can see we do have plenty of room uh, i think from there over to the door we've got over five feet so plenty of width and then going out here we've got an eight foot two by four so the uh, laundry room and the mud room are eight foot long so five foot by eight foot i mean heck you can make that as a, as a full bath um, but we could definitely put a half bath powder room over in here the only thing is is we might be losing a closet um, i'll have to talk to aaron and see how big uh or what she actually wants to do about that because the only reason why i'd like a closet is because obviously you don't want to put um uh vacuum cleaner and stuff like that you've got to have some place to put it i hate throwing stuff in a pantry and we've done that before where like the uh vacuum cleaner and like a swiffer jet used to live i don't want it in the pantry um, there's not that much room in the laundry room because once you build out the sink and the uh, uh washer and dryer 
you're just gonna have a, a sweeper sitting right here in the middle. And then obviously that little nub right there is only about eight inches. So you're not gonna put it against the back wall. You're not gonna put anything here in the mud room. So you really do kind of still need like a little closet. So maybe if we put the door going in this way, we can have a little like two foot by three foot, however wide that is like closet to put something in. But then over in here, you can walk in and go into uh, a half bath or vice versa. You could put a closet over in here and a door uh, going into the bathroom over here. But that's a little weird to walk out after you just did your business and now you're like looking at everyone in the kitchen and in the dining room and in the living room. So at least if you put the door over there, it's a little bit more secluded. But again, let me know what you guys think. I haven't built this wall out yet, but uh, how should I build that out? Powder room, closet, uh, one or the other, um, or who knows? You, you tell me, what, what do you think is the best idea? So I'm gonna get cracking at the rest of this. Uh, I'm gonna finish out the wall over here for the uh, mud room and for the laundry room, but I'm not gonna put up the walls uh, going this way towards the front of the house because we still need to carry big items through here. So we'll just build out here. Once I build that out here, that will give me idea an idea where I need to put the pantry. And then I'm gonna get over here and I'm gonna build the closet wall going that way. And I'm gonna build the master bedroom wall going that way to split the bathroom. And really, that's it, we're done. So hang tight, let's finish this out and uh, see you guys back in a little bit. All right, everybody. So we're gonna wrap this video up here. Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea. I know you've all been wanting to see what the layout's gonna look like. Um, it's getting freezing though. Uh, it's getting down to about 30 degrees. It's gonna be that way for the next couple days. And then we've got more rain. So unfortunately no soffits or anything cause I really want the lift back out here to do that. Uh, hopefully we can get a smaller lift because I really only need to go up like 10 feet. Um, maybe 20 feet for the outside uh, if we're gonna put those LVLs on and at least cut back the porch roof, kind of where the LVLs are going out, not cutting out all the way across, but just getting those kind of mounted. But uh, I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to call the rental place and see what they got. But last thing I got uh, knocked out. So basically again, the layout is now kind of complete. We've got the master bedroom wall going into the bathroom here. So as you go into the door here, you've got a uh, shower over here, you've got toilet over here, and then you've got vanity sinks over here. And then this little thing right here, that's just a linen closet where we can also put toilet stuff and um, whatever doesn't fit under the sink, I guess you can put in there. And that's just so it doesn't take space away from the master closet. So instead of having a whole shelf dedicated to, you know, linens and towels and stuff like that, you've just got a real small, like uh, 16 inch or so, I think I pushed that out. Uh, linen closet, which usually you only put like a one foot shelf in there and then a real tiny little like 24 inch door. So just open that up, grab your towel, grab your washcloth, stuff like that, and then you can shower. And then again, comment below, tell me what you guys wanna see. Uh, do you think it'd be a better idea, again, for the railing over here to be an open iron railing or should we use this space and do another two by six wall right there? And then again, what the heck should we put here? Is it weird to walk into the person's house right here 
and then you're turning and then you're having to go into a bathroom. So would you put a bathroom door here? Would you put the bathroom door facing the kitchen, which I think is really odd. Uh, again, it's just a powder room. So uh, I know there, uh, my wife's mother was complaining. My mother-in-law was like, you don't want a bathroom where everyone can see you and stuff like that. And, Aaron was like, there's no other place to put a bathroom. And, and Aaron's right. There's not really any place that isn't wide open as you walk in here. And if family's over and someone has to do their business, I mean, we've got the master bedroom that you can walk in and go over there for more privacy. One day you can just go down the stairs and use the bathroom down there in between um, kind of like a Jack and Jill bathroom where we'll have a bedroom over in that corner, a bedroom over in that corner where we've got those egress windows. And then in the middle will be a bathroom. So you can get away if you need to, but obviously you do have to either go downstairs or go into our master. But if we're having a party, the master bedroom is going to be open because, you know, you're going to do tours for people and stuff like that. And that's a little bit more private and, and secure. So I don't think it's bad to put a powder room over there. So again, going to wrap it up here, uh, going to get some dinner. It is absolutely freezing now. Uh, it is dropping fast. And I think not only is there more rain in the forecast, uh, but it might even be associated with some snow because even outside I can see that the standing water is actually starting to get some uh, ice forming on top of it. So we will see you guys next time. Please again, as always, like, subscribe, share, hit us up in the comments, uh, hit us up on Neck of the Woods 2020 on Instagram if you want to see more pictures or if you want to personal message us. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did because it's finally starting to feel a little bit like a house. So again, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, take care and we'll see you next time.